Here we are with Chapter 4, Section 3, the features and limitation of the least squares regression line. So as with everything, we want to make sure we understand to avoid extrapolation. And we're going to compute residuals and state the least squares regression property. We're going to construct and interpret the residual plots and determine whether outliers are influential. Hmm, wonder, we're using mean and standard deviation. Compute and interpret the coefficient of the determination. So let's take a look at this. Making predictions for values of the explanatory variable that are outside the range of the data are called extrapolation. In general, it's best practice not to use the least squares regression line to make predictions for x values that are outside of the range because the data of the linear relationship might not hold here. So in other words, if you see that this is the linear relationship right here, you don't want to continue this further to assume that it's going to hold true up here. It might not. It might curve, go a different way. It might have less of a slope, more of a slope. So best practice is to only use it for in between what you know is your linear relationship. Now, computing the residuals. What is a resi residual? Residual means leftover. So if you have a given plot, um, x, y, and the least squares regression line that we learned how to do in the last section, the residual point for x, y is the difference between the actual data and that prediction line. So this difference right here is your leftover, your difference between what you actually got and your prediction line. For the least squares regression line, the predicted selling price from buying a house, we can compute the residual value of the point 2555,426. The predicted value, predicted value is the y hat, remember, 413.6. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we had the value of 426. Um, of this on our chart. So if we take the actual point that we have, which is right here, and we subtract it from what we just calculated, we get a leftover, or what we call residual, of 12.4. So the magnitude of the residual is just the vertical distance from the point to the least squares regression line. The least squares regression line for which the sum of the squared vertical distances are as small as possible. So remember, our least squares regression line that we figured out using our math in the last section is the line that will fit in here, giving us the smallest possible difference between these data points in the line. So it follows that if we square each of these residual differences and add up the squares, the sum is less for the least squares regression line than for any other line. So in other words, if we do this for our good line that we just figured out using our math, we're not going to have any way of drawing a line where I would have something that would be less residual. So this is known as the least squares property, and that's what we want it to fit the best. Now, constructing and interpreting residual plots. Residual is a plot which the residuals are plotted against the values of the explanatory variable. When two va values have a linear relationship, the residual plot will not exhibit any kind of noticeable pattern. If the residual plot does, does exhibit a pattern, such as a curve pattern, then the variables do not have a linear relationship, and the least squares regression line should not be used. Do not rely on the correlation coefficient to determine whether two variables have a linear relationship. Even when the correlation is close to 1 or negative 1, the relationship might not be linear. To determine whether two variables have a linear relationship, you have to take a look at the scatter plot or the residual plot. So here's the least squares regression line for our selling the house problem. The residuals are in the plot shown. So again, the residual is the predicted value 
and our actual data that we have here. So what we did was we put all of these values in for x to get our predicted value. Then we subtracted the two to get our differences. The residual plot exhibits no noticeable pattern, so the use of the least squares regression line is appropriate. So we're looking at this going, mm, okay, this will work. But notice we have some crazy things going on up here, huh? Okay. So our residual plot, again, these are what our residuals are if we subtract the two. So you can see these. It's not going to look exactly like the other. Notice this one is really, really small and negative down here. So the residual plot exhibits no noticeable patterns, kind of everywhere. So the use of the squares, least squares regression line will work. Now you can use it on a TI-84. So um, you enter the values into L1 and the Y into L2. You're going to run the linear regression command. Press second, then Y equals, then one to access the plot menu. So after you access the plot menu, then you're going to hit the scatter plot type right here. And enter the residuals for the Y list in the field by pressing second stat and then residuals. Here we go. Again, no particular pattern. Constructing and interpreting residual plots. Okay, so an influential point is a point in a scatter plot that strongly affects the position of the least squares regression line. Consider a scatter plot of farmland versus total land in the area for the United States. The blue solid line on the dot is a least squares regression line for computing the 48 states, not including Texas or Alaska. The red dot is the least squares regression line for the 49 state, including Texas. Here we have Texas. You can see including Texas moves the line somewhat. Before it was like this. Now, since Texas is here, this line is going to be moved closer to that. So you can see how it makes a difference. Now, if we use Alaska, that doesn't have hardly any farmland here we can see how we're going to be affected by including Alaska into this. So these are the decisions that you might have to make when, as a researcher, does it make sense to use Alaska or Texas? So influential points are troublesome because the least square regression line is supposed to summarize all the data rather than reflect the position of a single point. So when a scatter plot contains outliers, as it does over here in Texas and especially Alaska, you can see what it did to our line. There is an influential point. The best practice is to compute the least squares regression line both with and without the points and the equations of both lines should be reported. So when this happens, instead of just erasing the uh, outlier plot and just or outlier point and just forgetting about it, you should compute it with and without and then put the lines all on there just as they did right here. Now they didn't include the uh, equations, but they also tell you you should include the equations as well. Computing and interpret the coefficient of determination. Okay, so explained and unexplained differences. Consider the least squares regression line and the line y equals y bar for any point x comma y. The difference between the actual data and the mean can be split into two parts. The first part, which is y hat minus y bar, so that would be your predicted line minus your mean, and the difference between the central value of your mean and the predicted value of the y bar is called the explained difference and represents the difference explained by the least squares regression line. So there's an explanation for this and we're saying it is explained by the least 
squares regression line. Now, the second part, if I take y minus the y mean, is a difference between the observed value and the predicted value of mean, which is just the residual. This difference is caused by factors unrelated to the least squares regression line, so this is called unexplained difference. So if I have this value here to my, res my residual, my leftover, from my data point to my predicted point, this is called an unexplained difference. The better the least square predi predictions are, the smaller the unexplained differences would be. We measure the size of unexplained differences by squaring them and adding them together. This quantity is called the unexplained variation. The explained variation is found similarly with the explained differences. So you do the same by squaring and adding them together. So when two variables have a linear relationship, the correlation coefficient r tells us how strong the relationship is. The measure most often used to measure how well the least square regression line fits data is r squared. The closer this is to 1, the closer the predictions made by the least square regression line are to the actual values on average. The quantity r squared is called the coefficient of determination and can be shown by these advanced methods. Take the explained variation over unexplained and explained added together, then you're going to divide. So explained variation divided by the total variation. So r squared measures the proportion of total variation that is explained by the least squares regression line. And if you recall, when we went back to our calculator, where was it? Oh, I guess I need to go the other way. I probably went right past it. Sorry about making you dizzy. Maybe it was in the last slide. I might have been in the last section. Well, I was going to point out that it shows um, it showed on your calculator before. Maybe we'll look at it again here. Uh, the R squared value. So this is what it is. So the correlation between the size and the selling price for the following data. We computed this already to be 0 0.9005918. What is the co coefficient of determination? How much of a variation is the selling price explained by the least squares regression line? So we're going to take that and we're going to square it. And the coefficient of determination is 0 0.811. We change this to a percent. So we have 81.1% of the variation in the selling price is explained by the least squares regression line. So what we should know from today is extrapolation outside the range of data should be avoided. You don't know if the pattern is going to continue. How to compute your residuals. The least squares regression property. How to construct and use a residual plot to determine whether it's appropriate for least squares regression. What an influential point is. How they can affect the least square regression lines. And finally, how to compute and interpret the coefficient of determination. So this will be it for chapter four. So we've got, I think, two more sections to do in 13, maybe 14. I can't remember if we're doing 13 and 14, but I'm pretty sure we're doing 13 next. So I will see you then.